What is up down and sideways? All you absolutely gorgeous individuals. Welcome back to League Unlocked. Eric and Mark here with you beauties. And it's finally time for some World Championship previews. We finally got all 20 teams qualified for this big dance. And now with this new format, it's just like we're doing regular old global power rankings. Because it's 20 to 1, you just have the 20 teams already picked for you made it pretty easy for us to get this list down to the 20 that we are doing for the power rankings global power rankings it's time the big dance is on the schedule and it is quickly approaching and we got all the attendees lined up go get your dancing shoes get ready for this one global power rankings for worlds 2024 let's dive in and one of the shortest breaks from the you know the end of gauntlet in the lck which was the last thing to wrap up and heading into it's like less than two weeks that the playing stage is starting so starting with those play-in teams of course at the bottom of these rankings and when you're looking at the minor regions hitting the international stage doing a ranking of any kind you got to incorporate a little bit what level they were at at previous msis even last year's world and unfortunately for the lla that means their champions, Rainbow Seven, are coming in at number 20 because they're the region that you kind of feel like you're always expecting a little bit more internationally and don't deliver. And it's been about two or three years now, I think, that you have had that expectation, that you have hoped for an upset, for a little bit of momentum and traction to be built upon for the LLA, and it's not come through at the international events, whether that be uh, an MSI situation or Worlds. And that's the interesting thing that you bring up beginning of these power rankings it's a strange combination and heavily favored towards what have you done this year but it is then checked against what your international history is you know recency all these type of things and that can factor into it and that's i think unfortunately where we find uh, rainbow seven getting their their hit knocked down in this position and a region that's kind of the opposite side of that not fully the opposite but the cb lol i feel like we've gotten more out of them uh, internationally. They're getting upsets against the VCS or being competitive against some of the major regions. Obviously, it's been loud the last couple of international events that we've been talking about, but uh, no strangers to the international stage are pain gaming. Of course, a lot of familiar faces. Kato in the mid lane, Cheetan in the bot lane, guys that we've seen dominating the CB law for years, really. I mean, we have seen a lot of loud in the recent years of these international events, but make no mistake that Pain Gaming has been involved with those finals, with those close calls in the CB lull to be just short of getting one of these opportunities to go to Worlds, get one of these international chances. Now we get it again for Pain Gaming. And as you laid out some familiar faces on the roster, always looking at the CB lull to make a type of shakeup, to be one of these players that makes things change up in the play in stage. Keep an eye on Pain Gaming to do that same thing this year. We're always trying to keep an eye on what's going on in the VCS, even when they had all this drama with half the rosters being changed up or banned or punished in some way, shape or form. They still found a way to be competitive um, on the international stage. And that's, you can talk about both seeds. This time it's Viking Esports, the return of S of M coming in uh, as a head coach. And then, of course, Gam there as the ones who won, what is it, six titles in a row now for the VCS. Still a lot of very familiar faces. Some ex Gam players on Viking as well. Now, that's the important thing to mention when you bring up Viking. And yes, the do the continued dominance of GAM at the top of the VCS region, that was not without its challengers this year around. I think more so than any of the previous years, we have seen that top title spot in the VCS be up for grabs, be contested by some of these other organizations. And one of those ones for sure is Viking Esports and the way that they challenge GAM, not enough at the end of the day when you when you go and sort things out and what you see from it. And GAM, of course, is that GAM that we all know and love. Or maybe you're on the hate side because you've been burned by them a couple international events in a row. I think last year we did get to see a little bit more of that GAM power, the firepower, that thing that we talk about so many times heading into it. And that was the first time in, I think, two or three years since we saw the VCS actually show up and be able to deliver. I know it's been a, a difficult road with the path to recovery since 
everything that happened with COVID and, and how we've had to rebound as that DCS region. But I think that this is a good year, good, strong two contenders coming out of the VCS towards Worlds. And that's, you know, a theme, not just in these minor regions, but as you get to the top tiers, obviously, but at least two seeds. It's not just one team, these squads, the VCS and the PCS that have two teams representing their regions. You're feeling pretty good about both of those representatives. Maybe in the LCS and LEC, the third seeds here feeling less good about 100 Thieves. That's, of course, because their playoff run ended by them getting absolutely demolished at the hands of FlyQuest. And for Mad Lions, I feel like it's nothing to do with these five players. It's the history of MDK at international events that have people sweating a little bit. Yes, and I think that you can uh, probably put that in the category for both of these teams where you're talking about what they can do, what potential they have. And it's always with that inexperience though, as well. And that is the thing that holds you back when you're looking at both of these teams and thinking about what is possible for them. Cause I think when you look at both of a hundred thieves and a mad lions, Koi, they're teams that can pull off these upsets that you're talking about when you're looking at teams in this section of the power rankings and what your aspirations at worlds can be. And at the same time, you do have to worry about being just completely overwhelmed. That's one of the possibilities that you got to be looking at. For 100 Thieves, I think that was clearly the case for them in the LCS when they got to that next stage after, you know, of course, you have no expectations against Cloud9. You get this miraculous, you know, upset and you pull it off. And then the attention, the eyeballs are on. It is that next stage. It is a big level up. I don't think they were quite ready for it. They're going to get some extra experience with that type of attention at this world's event mad lions coy a little bit different i don't know if it's whether about the pressure with them but we have certainly seen the ups and downs of this lineup and i don't know if you're feeling still confident enough of what little up what little rise over the hill that you had to make sure that you got to worlds in the first place as mad lions coy yeah, I think it's River and El Yoya are the only guys on either of these rosters that have ever been to a world championship or even an international event. So yeah, inexperience is definitely the name of the game for both of these squads. It's the total opposite for PSG Talon, the dynasty from the PCS, already seen the damage they can do at MSI. And even in the 13th spot, you could make a case to maybe put them ahead of Fnatic. This is the big dog of the play in stage. Don't get twisted with any LCS or LEC. And yes, they have potential. This is the big dog coming out of the play in stage. And one of the ones that you've got to be looking at if you are any of these other teams in the Swiss stage already, what you can be prepared against, what you can protect yourself from the, the upset, from the play in stage, PSG. That's the team that you got to be looking at. This is another year that they have continued that dominance in their region. And they are one of these teams that we know are prepped, prepared, ready, and hungry for one of these international opportunities to keep putting wins in their column against some of these other more major, more established regions, quote unquote. And if you're sweating as MDK because you're on that side of the bracket, just remember, you don't have to beat them to advance. You can get us the second seed, even if you end up losing to PSG. So we're still hope for EU, even though they will probably be matching up against those favorites. Uh, Fnatic, we alluded to, obviously, them not having a title this year is absolutely unbelievable for, you know, how some of these finals played out and the level that they were at for the majority of the year. It's absurd that they're not on uh, talking about hardware for them. And then last one on this list is Weibo Gaming, who uh, is so difficult to rank because some of the series you feel like should net them maybe a seven or eight on this list. But then they're matching up against LNG and BLG and are clearly a cut below them when they're getting 3 0 Oh, man. Fnatic and Weibo. There, there really is no more suitable pairing for the two of them in this global power rankings. I think we already had it pretty close with the two inexperienced squads in 100 Thieves and Mad Lions Koi. This is a, a little bit of a different flavor with Weibo and Fnatic when you step into their territory because you're right. A Fnatic without a title this year is wild. When you look at the games, when you watch the performances, the stats, this is a Fnatic team that should be champions of the LEC, but underperformance, bad performance, choke jobs. It's all happened in these critical moments, in moments where they've had the opportunity right in front of them, and they don't get it.
because they have failed at those moments. So how can you trust them when you get to this next stage, this next bigger competition? That is the major question mark hanging over Fnatic's head. And then you go to Weibo and it's a double of those big question marks hanging over their head because you're right. You go to that next stage. You go to that next level of where they can compete. Weibo has shown us that they could be as high as, you know, five, maybe seven, whatever on this type of power rankings in that top 10 even further. But at the same time, they've shown you a lower than 20 on this power rankings is what we have seen from Weibo Gaming. What do you trust in them? Usually the easiest non-question mark coming out of the West is G2 Esports. But despite winning four titles this year, it feels like... We're less confident in them going into Worlds than we have been the last couple of years. Definitely less confident than the same roster that went in 2023. The confidence is not there for this G2 lineup in the same way that it has been in the past. But I don't think that should dissuade people from thinking that they have an opportunity and a chance in a lot of these games that they will find themselves in. It's all going to be a question about, I think, probably the meta and how that shifts up and what G2's... Uh, approach to the meta is going to be at this event and then for me again big time plays we need someone to really step up when you're looking at g2 and you've not really had to make this type of uh, claim or statement for them in the past because the engine is usually firing caps that's got to be claps that's got to be the big player for this one and that's not that he's not been that engine that's been driving and been strong or successful for g2 that's just that I think that he is going to be that one to give the extra spark plug, the extra kick that gets this engine really going for G2 at Worlds. If they're having success, Claps is going to be a big part of getting that thing going. And, you know, there's a reason this dude picked up, what, his third, fourth MVP in the LEC. It's because he was that driving force for G2 for pretty much throughout from winter all the way to this uh, season finals over in the LEC. But and maybe low expectations is actually where this G2 is going to thrive. I know the next part of this list, everyone's going to be going, wait, wh what planet are we on? You've got not one, but two LCS teams ahead of T1. And as a rebuttal, I say, did you watch T1 in playoffs and the gauntlet run, number one? And number two, this is probably the strongest pairing. I'm saying collective two seeds that North America has sent to the world championship maybe ever maybe like 2017 when tsm was actually good but in a long time i haven't felt so good about two teams representing the lcs it's finally happened and what did it take to get this type of situation it's taken one of one of the sloppiest most questionable years in t1's history where they have actually achieved getting getting to worlds and locking that up combined with some of the best that we have ever seen from the lcs is one of the ways that you get one of these combos T1 limping into this situation, obviously throughout the, you know, all, throughout really the back half of the summer split, including then this LCK playoffs and now gauntlet situation that they had to go through to lock it down at the last of last seconds, last game before we get to this break before Worlds. And then you look at the LCS squads in Team Liquid and FlyQuest and arguably you swap swap them any way you want. Yep. Whether you're going with the long-term run that Team Liquid has been on this year and you're trying to, and you're referencing, you know, you're looking back at MSI, you're looking at EWC, you're taking that, or you're going with the hot hand, and that is FlyQuest. And you're looking at this past month, month and a half that they have been able to build up towards, and that is what you're trusting in, that that is going to be the power level that they'll continue in. The key parts of this team, of course, continuing from, uh, the little change that happened after MSI when, you know, Jensen is out of the team, bringing in quad into the mid lane. It's still all about, you know, what Whippo's playing in the top side, how inspired can get it going for this team in the jungle. And he can do it on anything in, in the game of League of Legends. And then the step up from the bottom lane, Masu and Busio, I think together specifically though, Masu and the damage that he has been able to dish out and step up and reliably give for this FlyQuest team. Team Liquid and FlyQuest, they're for real. The LCS label is going to scare off a lot of people. Not me. I'm a blind homer anyways, but I'm going to take my boys <laughs> over top of T1. It feels like, and this seems like a curse that I'm about to say, but it feels like these two teams won't play scared, which is always what we see LCS teams do on the international stage. They cower back into their shell, just wait for the other team to make a mistake. And spoilers, the best teams of the LPN and LCK don't 
make many mistakes. So you just lose the game. But it feels like they will continue to play their game against some of the best teams. We hope that that's the case. And if it is, they can be competitive with some of the best teams. Not necessarily win, but at least be competitive as you transition out of this board. You have the D plus in that six spot and you carry that over into the five spot in LNG. Another spot you could maybe argue where these two teams are going to be. And obviously the biggest question mark there is, is Scout going to be playing? Because if Scout's not there for LNG, then they're tumbling down these rankings. Yes. And I think if anyone, if you haven't, if you've been, you know, kind of going, okay, well, I'm off the radar until it is actual world's time type of thing. And you haven't been lurking around the, the web and stuff. You might have missed out on this one, but this whole situation between EDG and LNG, it's messy because we got a heck of a lot of he said, she said, these, he said, and a lawsuit and, uh, here, oh, lawsuit uh, there. They said, and, and them said over there, and everyone is saying something about this one. At the end of the day, still at this point in time, no certainty on how this is going to play out and what the situation will be if he is there. You can definitely count on LNG being one of these players that you're going to have to deal with, and especially the form that Scout has rebounded with this year since some of the most abysmal play that we have ever seen from him in his career is one of those positives that you're looking at for LNG. Obviously, if this situation plays out uh, anything other than Scout going to Worlds, we got a heck of a lot to talk about. And again, them ahead of D+. Plus. Obviously, D+. Plus. They needed that fifth game, even though it was somewhat convincing, and they were definitely the better team against T1. The playoff ending was not great for them, getting smacked by T1 and losers after getting smacked uh, in that upper bracket. So, feeling okay about D+, plus heading to Worlds. Obviously, better than T1, as they won that series against them, so still deserving of that sixth spot. Uh, TES at number four is obviously an incredibly tricky one, and people are going to say, how the hell do you have them there? They lost to Weibo. It feels like we didn't get enough games because we didn't get to see any gauntlet action out of them. LNG got redemption by 3-0-ing Weibo. You still feel like TES is the second best team in the LPL. It, it's unfortunate for top esports because I don't think they're going to take it as, oh, look at us. We're in the top five for the global power rankings heading into Worlds. I think they're going to look at it as, how are we not in the top three of the global power rankings heading into Worlds? That's going to be their conversation, their burden to take in to this event and to show the rest of the world that we are deserving of one of those type of spots is going to be their goal. You're right. Top esports is one of these teams where you feel like it's been so long because, well, it has been so long since you've been able to see them, since they've gotten an opportunity for that redemption. That's the big one that they didn't get really in the LPL in this situation as you laid out with LNG. They get loser's bracket. They get the gauntlet situation where they can have that lasting impression. That last thing that you've seen of them is that positive. Top esports, not exactly the same case, but you should not be scared of this team, what they have gone through this year, the growth, development of that bottom lane. Yes, a growth and development of the bottom lane of veteran players in Jackie Love and how he has played alongside Mako is one of the big things for me for that team, as well as 369 in the top side, one of the most solid, stable options that you can have in that role. Now, what you really notice with TES stumbling lng question marks around scout is the top three heading into this world championship are about two floors ahead of everybody else coming in and that's with blg getting bumped to third and you say how are they getting bumped to third they went nine and one in playoffs and completely decimated their way through but the rest of the lpl really wasn't at their level and what we got in the lck finals with hanwa not only stepping up but surpassing genji on the day you saw the lck as a whole get leveled up the reason genji is at number one is because listen you gotta still take into account how good they've been all year and i think a lot of people it's like the fpx curse in 2021 even though they lost in finals you still felt like they were the strongest team coming in it, it's a situation for me where you got the balancing scales for it and you got maybe an extra two feathers on the side of Gen G. And one of them 
one of those is coming in from your regular season success right the whole way through that you have done and the other feather that's coming in is getting it done at least finally the msi champion throwing that on there gives you that little bit of extra weight for this gen g to get the top spot is the way that i'm looking at this one blg as you said the most dominant team from the lpl clearly the elite squad that is heading out of that region what we have seen from them the only real knack that you can give them is not having that true equal in the lpl nobody was able to rise up to that almost type of status and give them that challenge give them that run that sometimes you need to sharpen yourself against to hit that next level and that's what I think we've got in the LCK with Gen G and Hanwha Life. Gen G Black, uh, Gen G Orange. However you want to slice them up, both of these teams are fantastic. You're looking at Hanwha Life getting that win in the finals against Gen G. That upset is a big part for them to finally establish as an elite squad. Not just great, not just good, not just rising, but elite tier is the way that you got to be going in at that top level status as champions for Hanwha Life. And then Gen G still holding into that top spot. What you've got for them, everything I laid out before, that weight, the added in of the regular season, the MSI finally getting it done at an international event. This Gen G's got to head the world as the number one spot. And the big thing here is it wasn't just a Gen G choke crumble in the finals. It was a Zeka and Co. stepping up to a new level. And I think honestly it is going to be a bit of a wake up call and might be better for Gen G heading into Worlds to not have the Golden Road thing that everyone's talking about, the added pressure as the pseudo favorites. I still think they're favorites for the event. But Gen G, or Hanwha Life, excuse me, really pulled them down to be that 1A, 1B team from LCK. I hope their takeaway from that type of situation is going to be some of the stuff that we talk about so many times with pick and ban and draft and using that as one of your tools and identifying the hot hand in a series going, you know what, you and this thing, mm -mm, not allowed. Do something different. Show us that you got it on something else. That's always one of the strategies that I think is useful and I am painfully so underutilized at the top level from what we see. I think that is one of the things that they got to take away from that series against Hanwha Life when you have players like Zeka find that performance. Team rankings just the beginning. We got top 20 players, full listing for every role. The world's hype is just leaving the station. But that's it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you wonderful people. Thank you for hanging out. We'll catch you on that flippity flip.